Okay, welcome back again to some Wargame Red Dragon action. It's going to be a 4 vs 4 again on a different map. Um, I had it open for God's sake, it was like Paradise or something. I mean, you'll see it at the end of the video anyway, and so will I actually, which will help me identify what to put in the description and all that. But anyway, let's just go straight into the game itself. Perfect. So as you can see, it's going to be uh, north versus south. So this is actually pointing north there. We'll just switch over to our opponent's perspective. Actually, no, wait a minute. This is us this time. So yeah, this time we're actually going to be playing as Pact. And uh, yeah, got myself, Lightman, Gladfair, SPQR, and Urbeck as Pact. Our opponents are going to be these guys here, the Nature or Hato Bastards. And they're going to be Pop, Vitez, O1, the Lizard of Doom, Crazy Leg Sam, and Valis. I'll actually just switch over to their perspective. So as you can see, the battle lines are being drawn, and uh, we'll just zoom out and see what's happening. So they're going to be capturing Alpha immediately, unlike us, who are just going to ignore Echo until they capture Alpha. I'm going to be scouting, or hoping to scout, and yeah, apparently Pop is going to get that, Lord that. Pop that, Valis that. Sounds good to me. And as for us, uh, well, you can see he's going to get what, so. Actually, what was I going to be doing? Oh, okay, I'm going to be going for India and supporting there. Maybe SPK is going to be going for Golf. Urbeck for Kilo and also to harass Juliet. So, yeah, there we go. Someone's going to go for Hotel. Yep, Urbeck going to go for that. Uh, get a nice little land route, well, slightly closer land route to these other points. Sounds good to me. Get more score points coming in as well. Yeah, these points here, they do not get any... Um, they don't have any uh, score points n listed next to them, as you can see. Like a plus one there doesn't have that there, so it doesn't actually make any difference in terms of score points here. It just provides a um, route for C units to come in, which is why I said don't bother capping unless if they do, basically. Or unless they actually send navy towards us. Which hopefully my recon will spot. In any case, that does it for preliminary planning. Let's just fast forward, shall we? And there we go. Man, it spent a couple of minutes there actually before the game even started. So opponents unsurprisingly starting off with helicopter infantry with some patterns, cobras and such. Just uh, slow things down again. Oh, actually cobras. Interesting thing. Uh, yeah, okay. Starting off with that to begin with. We're going to go straight for Juliet apparently. More cobras to follow. Wow, it's really like, likes his cobras. Kills also coming in with his anti-air missiles. Eagle flying straight over us. Oh, actually this would have been a perfect opportunity for the Eagle has to be deployed. He should have deployed them a bit earlier, uh, a few seconds earlier, and SBQR would have been able to shoot down that Eagle, in my opinion. But, no, he actually did manage to do it anyway. And, oh, there we go. Now I remember. This was actually the game where I deployed my lasers. Lasers. I might have titled the game, actually, that on YouTube. So, as you can see, they've got two lots of infrared missiles. So if these lasers can get close enough to, um, pretty much anything in the air, they should be able to take it out. The amount of, uh, infrared missiles they have there, and the gun's not too bad either. SU-27S, slightly more sensible, if slightly more pricey, um, air sub plane coming in. Unfortunately, running into a little bit too much. SAS is managing to take it down with its stingers, basically, from what I can tell. Another anti-air here. So yeah, good job by Val Valis actually deploying SAS beforehand, probably anticipating aircraft or something to come in, actually. In fact, he might even be able to take out these, um, Helicopters, and yeah, now I've basically got a mid-air jewel of helicopters. Something that you actually saw quite a bit of um, during war game European escalation, and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a lost art by the time of, uh, or the era, I suppose you could say, of um, war game Red Dragon, but there you go, we actually got to see it there as well. Jewel of Titans. Or Clash of Titans, if you prefer. There you go, quite a bit of action to be had, indeed. Unfortunately, opponents... Okay, I'm not sure where they got plus two from, but in any case, we did manage to get the initial score point advantage. Things at the moment are... not too bad for us. We managed to secure goal for India is probably going to be the deciding... Um, flag point or zone or whatever. I have to see what happens here. And they do have a bit of anti-air though, so these helicopters are going to suffer immensely. Hopefully they're going to be inflicting loads of damage. FJBs at the very least do manage to come in there, destroying a couple of transports. Unfortunately, Jagos do manage to get out of there. Panicked, mind you, and these guys are only shaken. So I think these FJBs getting a little bit too close. We'll just have a look, actually. These guys... Ah, okay, so... 
neither, neither of them have uh, close quarter combat MGs. These guys should be better trained though, so I think these guys are yeah, going to, especially since they're panicked, they should die relatively quickly. My guys are getting worried though, good reason. And at the same time, India does appear to be captured, but only just. It really is on a knife's edge here, and they do have um, this little... Well, actually, they don't really have the whole bunch of buildings there, but they do have a few things there. So we'll see what happens. There's also a couple of anti-radars coming in as well, very nicely done by SBQ. Now taking out the uh, Japans. One of them does manage to survive, though, bizarrely enough. And wait a minute, we even got... Um, some cluster artillery coming in as well. I'm not 100% sure if it actually died before getting hit there by cluster artillery, but uh, very nicely done actually. And let me guess, am I deploying that or is someone else deploying that? Uh, let's see, I think it was around here. This is from myself. Yep, this is my own cluster artillery. Right near. Still, our opponents definitely are giving us a run for our money. Oh my god, but look at this freaking spam. Look at these MiG 21 MLs with freaking rockets and infrared missiles. In fact, let's just get a close and view of them. Uh, they're going to attack something. You know? Oh, damn it. That was a bit disappointing. Oh, well, we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, of course, these guys are going to be attacking, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Rocket spam. You just gotta love it. So these guys are going to be dropping a couple of bombs. There you go. Very nicely done, indeed. Little pinpricks, basically, but. Uh, a lot of pinpricks does a lot of damage. But yeah, so myself here, unfortunately, getting these infantry caught out with, uh, yeah, no real support. I'm not sure what I was thinking, sending them that far forward, actually, without something to support them. Uh, these anti air infantry, anyway. Uh, actually, I actually got a couple of Twardies, even. PT-91 Twardies. Are they the expensive ones? Yes, they are. So they're the new, um, one of the new units that NSWP got in a recent patch. And where our opponents actually, uh, are trying to advance all of those patterns, but, um, yeah, they're just getting massacred, utterly massacred by these uh, incredibly powerful Polish twaddies. Man, you thought Polish um, Polish BMPs were great. Well, these guys are just ridiculous. They shouldn't be clustered like this, though. But yeah, these patterns by Crazy Leg Sam, he should have retreated them, basically. In fact, he should have actually sent up some recon. He basically ran blind straight into these guys. So yeah, recon definitely another thing, but it's very important in this game, as you can see, because, yeah, these Twadi is getting a great um, ambush position, basically destroying everything here. Got nothing but a column of dead uh, tanks and vehicles there. Very nicely done, indeed. Although, one of the patterns is still alive, though. But, uh, yeah, he's going to run into my FJBs, who thankfully do have a couple of rockets, and hopefully they're going to destroy it at some point. Any time, sure. But, yeah, unfortunately, they do have a bit of a foothold here, and they might, if they can actually consolidate their position here, then they could actually use that as a bit of a springboard to go into this forested area here, possibly put a command vehicle infantry here, and at the very least, neutralize India. Because, as you can see, they don't really have, um, yeah, they don't really have too, too much along uh, this front, and I do have Superdizies, Sturmeries, and Scott Twos to help defend, although they'll fall to vehicles, but thankfully they haven't actually sent anything else out there just yet. In fact, I should have actually sent out some recall myself there, now that I think of it. Might possibly get an assault for free here, there is a bit of a weak point, so yeah, always good to try to probe your opponents for, uh, for weakness. Of course, I don't mean that in any sort of other innuendo, of course, but uh, yeah. Probing for weakness, always a good idea. My Superdizzy is unfortunately, yeah, getting caught out in the open there, and yeah, their flames not really doing as much as they could because of that. Not to mention, of course, artillery coming in, uh, panicking, to destroying everything as well. The actually, if they were around here, they should be able to take pot shots, but uh, what the hell, I guess we'll just, uh, wow, just observe the, uh, <laughs> Oh, great stuff. We'll just observe the uh, rocket spam, basically. And some bomb spam as well. Very nice uh, napalm, actually. Right down the middle, so these riflemen will be forced to retreat or to uh, stand around and do nothing. Unfortunately, they... Wow, they actually can run out of there pretty quickly. But then again, I mean, I'd be running out of there pretty quickly myself if I was on fire, so... Is that to consider? The APC will probably die... Where are these twaddies? Yeah, Actually, yeah, if Glafir can take good care of them, they should be able to do immense amounts of damage. Oh, that's right, before I was going to say, if you could get them around, maybe here, then you could have actually taken pot shots at the riflemen inside these buildings, but, uh, there you go, so, I mean, if you just send them around here, you should be able to take pot shots at these guys anyway, so we'll see what happens there, unfortunately, uh, yep, Pop getting the right idea is going to be, uh, invading from a weak point in India, and I believe, um, I was completely, uh, taken by surprise, basically due to, 
Oh, okay, anyway, due, due, to, due to the fact that I didn't have any freaking recon and yeah, some Pertises can do a bit of damage. I mean, they'll do well against the uh, Panzer Grenadiers, not too well against the APCs, but thankfully the SU 22M4 is, which I think I checked the Slovakia. No, there, he's German. Oh, there you go, shows you what I know. Uh, yeah, they're actually um, cutting down these APCs anyway, and leaving the infantry for my Sapirizes. Which, uh, yeah, definitely not going to complain about, that's for sure. I just wish that this guy would actually go against his Fuchs. An open city takes a random shot at an APC. Well, what the hell, I, I'm pretty sure it has some infantry in it. Unfortunately, he did end up dying. Their opponents actually are going to bring in some more anti-air compared to in the last game. And at the same time, we do have a bit of an attack right hook happening by Vladis, actually, is that? No, Valis against uh, Kilo. And unfortunately, at the same time, we've got a bit of a left hook of our own. Actually, no, that'll be our right hook from our perspective. Yes, our own right hook against Juliet. And uh, yeah, like them, we actually do have a bit of a foothold. We are very vulnerable to, to uh, aircraft, though, so. Well, our, par uh, uh, will our opponents. I was going to say something else. Parents. parents yes, will our parents be watching this? But anyway, will our um, opponents actually take advantage of the lack of anti air? We'll just have to wait and see. At the same time, though, very interesting maneuver by our opponents. Getting. Uh, so, did actually capture Alpha. Got some recon here, which needs to actually be deployed to be able to actually work. And actually got a Lafayette. Actually see that? Nope, not yet. Lafayette does have a very good stealth, medium stealth. It's very good for a ship though. Exceptional sea optics, 60% ECM, so basically, yeah, he can uh, be a bit of a pain in the ass. A great scout ship actually, and uh, yeah, not too bad in terms of uh, anti-ship missiles and guns as well. A bit pricey, but yeah, you get what you pay for, that's for sure. Finally going to be sending in my supposes, but unfortunately it looks like I sent them in on fight move, and as you can see, they're only going to be in range to actually use their AKs. They're going to have to get a bit closer. Basically, just going to have to issue an actual move command if I want them to use the um, flamethrowers, which hopefully I'll do at some point because they're using the machine guns just fine and dandy. So let's see what happens. These guys, as you can see, are not going to stand a chance against the um, leopards, especially since they seem to have gotten detected pretty much instantly. Thankfully, though, we do have some ATGMs coming in from uh, these guys, maybe. No, my Fagots, okay. A couple of AT gems coming in, not really doing too much damage. Better than nothing, I suppose, but yeah. These Perseus can't really do too much damage against um, tanks like that, especially like an armoured one, like a 2A4. Rifleman, on the other hand, trying to... Uh, I'm not sure what Crazy is doing, leaving them out in the open like that. Are they the same ones as before, I wonder? In any case, yeah, definitely do not want to leave infantry out in the open like this. This is just a ridiculous killing zone at the moment. Also should be separating out the Roland Freeze. Looking on the uh, left though, we do have a nice little, yeah, right hook of our own from our perspective coming in. No command vehicles to take advantage of it, but we definitely do have a pretty solid foothold. The biggest thing to worry about would be the lack of anti-air. But lo and behold, we do have a Tunguska M, and how's it going to do? Whoa. Okay, oh no, there's actually a second Tunguska there as well, so. Yeah, very nice. Very nicely done indeed. Apparently he's got the, uh, guns enabled for them. Yeah, this Lafayette is going to be a little bit of an issue, and uh, yeah, okay, yeah. At the same time, SBQR should have been paying attention to what he was doing with his um, command infantry. Presumably he was going to deploy here, but he must have forgotten about that, and uh, yeah, we're not going to have much of an... <coughs> sorry, not going to have much of a navy to react to the Lafayette. I mean, we could just deploy other things against them anyway, but a second Lafayette isn't coming, and yeah, these things can be a bit painful. I mean, he, he could actually capture Echo Okay, not anymore, but he could have captured Echo and got more C units to come in. Now, that would have been kind of amusing to watch, but uh, no, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, though. Keep an eye on that. Keep the other eye on what's happening, where the actual action is. Juliet's opponents are... they do have some infantry to reply. Actually, these SASs should be inside buildings, but anyway. All these corrections, I'm issuing, but anyway. Um, yeah, I suppose that's more so for people to actually play the game as well. You know, noting uh, his mistakes and all that. Actually, if we just have a look at the m bigger perspective rather than just individual things like that, what are opponents. You know, just having a look at what they could be doing. The Lafayettes, in my opinion, are a little bit of a waste. I mean, yeah, they're just. Okay. They are, well, they're taking out a, a, a shims or anti ship missiles that are going towards them, but uh, they're not really doing too much. If they were supporting like an attack on Golf, for example, that would be pretty good, especially since uh, 
Yeah, they've got pretty good range on their, ma their main guns, so they can just basically shell pretty much everything in land, I think. Although, oh, that's right, they're direct fire guns as well. Not 100% sure how well that would work. Buildings would technically count as being in the way. Still, they could shell a bit if there was an attack on Golf, so... Lafayette's on their own, yeah, not, not really going to do too much in, under these circumstances, and they cost quite a bit as well, as you can see. Uh, Juliet, they should be a little bit more aggressive in terms of, you know, making sure that they, um... You know, that we don't have a foothold. The Roland Free is way too close, so the anti needs to be in a slightly more sensible position. These guys are way too close as well. Actually, no, they might be able to take out the, um... Might be able to take out the helicopter, actually. In any case, they need to be more aggressive in taking out these guys. And, uh, yeah, they need, to, they need to be sending in, um, they need, need to be massing up more of an assault to centre India, and, uh, I mean, their artillery barrages were pretty nice. They seem to have stopped them, though, for the time being. Oh, no, actually, no, they do, do have still more artillery coming in, but they basically, they need more, um, need more boots on the ground, basically, uh, than what they have at the moment. So far, they're just sending in a few things piecemeal without really too much in terms of real support. The Jaegers coming in in their Fuchs transports, just getting torn apart piecemeal. This is a clear area. It is actually, funnily enough. So, okay, well, good kudos to opponents for uh, actually identifying. Oh, there goes Pop. And um, we have actually identifying this weak point. I'm moving to plug it up with infantry though. And I do have some ATGMs here and there sprinkled around. So, yeah. Problem is their opponents are still not properly exploiting the gap that's here. And speaking of which, we should have actually plugged it up much more, um, much more quickly than what we're doing now. But oh well. And yeah, I mean, he sent in his infantry and all that. He should have. I mean, what he should have been doing is he should be sending him, sending him supported with um, these tanks and such. As I said, he sent them in on their own. They died horribly. And uh, oh, speaking of which, I think we just lost the command vehicle as well. Oh well, too bad. Oh no, it's still here actually. Okay, just lifted off and landed back down again. Interesting. Almost dead, so there you go. Yeah, our opponents, they just really need to, need to be coordinating their attacks much um, much better than what they're doing now, and they need to be more aggressive in terms of keeping their own sectors secure as well. Down goes one Corsair, and second one is dead as well. Barely. It's like the last few shots managed to take it out there. I suppose the last shot always takes out something. But anyway, um... Yeah, launching a bit of napalm, not really doing that much really. VDVs, I suppose, to get stunned and shaken, but not stirred. But uh, yeah, overall, opponents definitely could have been uh, much more aggressive, and yeah, they could have coordinated their attacks much better. Although, wait a minute, wait a minute, they actually are going to be attacking along here. A whole bunch of napalm was basically um, panicking and killing many of the infantry that come through here before they even get to our um, own infantry, the Sturm Pioneers. Are basically going to make short work of them in the open like that. It looks like the Lafayette, one of them has been destroyed. They've got a Baku as well for some reason, as well as another Lafayette here. So basically their ships did nothing and they costed loads of money, so it was a bit of a waste. The thing with this map is that it is a bit tricky for naval units to make too much of a difference. Um, unless if you go for like an all-out amphibious assault, because you could, for example, if we're looking at it from... Uh, there we go, you can see the action from afar. Having a look at it from uh, this perspective, so if our opponents basically went around with their ships here, they um, and if they had like an attack going in at the same time, this is another thing, they need to time their attacks a bit better as well. So yeah, if they had their ships going around like here, had an attack going through here as well in order to uh, get us to try to concentrate some defences along here, what they could have had is they could have had some naval transports or just even APCs and amphibious units, whatever, coming in around here and, uh, or just through the, f actually not around here, whatever. Just coming in around here and, yeah, then depositing troops and such right onto Golf's um, backside, essentially, while they were distracted from the front. Didn't quite uh, happen, though, to say the least. What's even more so is that we actually got a great, um, Recon on our opponents as well. Actually, I think this guy can't really see much. Yeah, he's too far inside the forest. He can see aircraft, I suppose, and uh, he can go. He can press on, which he's actually going to be doing. So, he might be able to take out something, maybe. Maybe this Mars cluster artillery, maybe. Ah, yes, the Spetsnaz Gru. I think it's one of the um, new units for a USSR, and yeah, the rockets aren't that great. They get a Druganov, so. Or Dra Dragunov, should I say? I think I've been calling it Dragunov quite a few times in other games too. So they get that. They get that at the very least. Pazar, and I suppose they get exceptional stealth because of. Um, actually, do they get exceptional stealth? Uh, 
stealth. Very good. Oh, because they come in 10-man squads, of course. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, maybe just going to use these guys to spot and planes to destroy. No, apparently not. And we're definitely sending our um, planes a little bit too close. This one's going to have to evac. This guy is going to uh, launch some uh, rockets and AGMs. Still not managing to take out that grizzly. What the hell? He didn't launch any of his rockets for some reason. Maybe he can't launch them both at the same time. I don't know. Well, in either case, yeah, this point has been completely wrecked. And finally, we actually got a command squad coming in as well. Like, Commander No, Odds Dillon, blah, 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 blah. So, command squad, that's what you need to know. Yeah, it still was an interesting game, actually. And yeah, you did get to see the MiG, uh, MiG lasers being deployed. I think it's a Polish unit or something. But uh, there you go. Not only that, we've also got some uh, chat there as well. Nothing too political, although you might comment out on that a bit later on. Still a hell of a game, though. Hopefully you've enjoyed that, and I shall see you all next time for the next game, probably.